Welcome to the FiberTight Multiport installation instructional video. First, let's review our recommended installation practices. Follow all appropriate health and safety requirements and use appropriate personal protective equipment or PPE. The instructions include these symbols when PPE is required. Use cutting tools that are designed for use on fiberglass or composites. Failure to use appropriate cutting tools or blades may damage the fiberglass tank sump parts and result in a poor installation. Store all resins and adhesives used during the installation process in a warm and dry location until ready for use. The internal temperature of all resins and adhesives during installation should be between 60 degrees and 70 degrees Fahrenheit at the time they are used. Surface preparation is critical for the application of fiberglass and adhesives. Any fiberglass surfaces that will be fiberglassed or bonded will require that the sanding sufficiently exposes the surface fibers. Failure to properly prepare surfaces prior to the fiberglassing or bonding may result in a poor or leaking joint. Use acetone and clean rags to clean any prepared surface. Again, failure to clean surfaces prior to bonding may result in a poor or leaking joint. OPW, the global leader in retail fueling products, has fiber-tight multi-port systems available for both single-wall and double-wall tank sumps. The fiber-tight single-wall multi-port kits can be used for retrofitting existing single-wall tank sumps as well as for installation on newly installed single-wall tank sumps. The double-wall multi-port kits are exclusively for use on new double-wall sumps. When installing the fiber-tight multi-port system onto a single-wall tank sump, the fiber-tight multi-port kit will include a fiberglass top hat with a 37-inch diameter stainless steel ring, as shown here. Fiber-tight single-wall multi-port kits currently include top hats designed to fit 42-inch and 48-inch round tank sumps, including sumps manufactured by OPW, Xerxes, and Containment Solutions. When installing the fiber-tight multi-port system onto a double-wall tank sump, the fiber-tight multi-port kit will include a 37-inch diameter stainless steel ring that is designed to fit onto and be installed to the top hat of the double-wall tank sump. Fiber-tight double-wall multi-port kits will work with any double-wall sump that has a 37-inch diameter top hat opening, including sumps manufactured by Xerxes, Bravo, and Containment Solutions. All fiber-tight multi-port systems for single-wall tank sumps are shipped as a complete kit with all of the necessary parts required for installation. Inspect all parts upon delivery to make sure that they have not been damaged during shipment and that all parts have been received. Each single-wall multi-port kit should include all of the parts shown here with the exception of the fiberglass resin kits which are ordered separately. It may also be necessary to order overfill valves and fill and vent adapters and caps separately as they are not included in these kits. Store parts carefully to avoid damage on the job site. Take special care with the sealants in the fiberglass resin kits as prolonged exposure to excessive heat may cause them to crystallize. All fiber-tight multi-port systems for double-wall tank sumps are shipped as a complete kit with all of the necessary parts required for installation. The double wall kits are often referred to as PK kits and will include all the parts required for EVR compliance. Inspect all parts upon delivery to ensure that they have not been damaged during shipment. Store parts carefully to avoid damage on the job site. The fiber type multi port kit will not work properly unless it is installed as shown in this dimensional drawing. Regardless of what manufacturer's sump base is being used, the top of the fiber tight top hat must be installed so that it is 10 to 12 inches from finish grade. Finish grade is defined as a level at which the top of the multi port frame or cover will be installed. This may be 1 to 2 inches above the tank pad level to allow water to drain away from the cover. Check this dimension by running a string line at finish grade and dry fitting the top hat onto the sump base. Measure down from the string line to confirm the 10 to 12 inch distance. Installing the top hat too low may make it difficult to install the shroud boots and thereby properly seal off the spill buckets. Installing the top hat too high may make it difficult to install the multi-port cover into the frame. Please contact OPW Technical Support if you have any questions or concerns during installation. 
In order for the FiberTight multi-port kit for double wall sumps to work properly, the top edge or the upper lip of the double wall top hat must be installed 10 to 12 inches below the finished grade string line. As discussed earlier, the finished grade string line is defined as the top edge of the multi-port frame. Installing the double wall tank sump too high or too low may cause issues with the installation of the multi-port kit. Now let's join Jim Goodman as he shows us a demonstration of how the multi-port should be installed. Once the sump bases have been properly installed, the fill and vent risers can be cut and threaded into the tank bungs. The fill and vent risers will need to be cut to the proper length so that the top of the installed P761 spill buckets are three inches to four inches below the string line set at finish grade. This is a critical dimension. Installing the spill buckets too low will make it impossible to connect them to the multi-port cover. As shown in the drawing, the riser length should be the distance measured from the finish grade string line to the top of the tank or manway bung minus 22 and a half inches, 19 inches for the spill bucket height, plus three and a half inches for the multi-port cover. Follow standard industry practices for installation of the fill and vent risers. Once the risers are installed, install the P761 spill buckets onto the appropriate riser. The P761 spill buckets are manufactured with a factory machine thread, so there is no need to install a face seal adapter. Double check that the riser lengths are correct by measuring the distance from the top of the spill buckets to the string line and ensuring that it is within the proper tolerances. Once this measurement is confirmed, it is a good idea to remove the spill buckets and store them until the multi-port cover is installed at a later date. This will prevent the buckets from sagging during the installation process. Cap off the fill and vent risers until the spill buckets are reinstalled. Follow tank manufacturer's instructions for completing the installation of the sump base and riser sections. Prior to installing the FiberTight top hat, sand the top two inches of the sump riser and then carefully clean off the fiberglass residue with acetone. Using a heavy grit sandpaper, vigorously sand the bonding channel on the underside of the FiberTight top hat and clean with acetone. Using a caulk gun, install a thick bead of the supplied SL1100 caulk into the bonding channel. Carefully place the top hat onto the sump riser section and press down until the top hat is fully seated. Use a latex glove to run a finger around the base of the top hat to ensure that the caulk forms a watertight seal. Inspect from below to ensure there are no gaps. Allow at least 24 hours of cure time before water testing or putting any pressure on the top hat. While not shown in this instructional video, OPW also recommends fiberglassing the top hat joint using our STH FGK fiberglassing kit to ensure a watertight seal. Follow standard industry practices for backfilling the fill sump area to allow for the concrete tank pad to be poured. Cover the tops of the multiports with a filter material to prevent any damage to the multiport systems during the backfilling process. Once backfilling has been completed, install the watertight shroud platform onto the top hat and position it around the two spill buckets. Turn all T-handles to the closed position to ensure that the platform is tightly secured to the stainless steel ring on the top edge of the top hat. The shroud boots can now be installed onto the shroud platform using the 14-inch diameter band clamps. Simply slide the shroud boot with the bolt holes facing up onto the shroud platform openings and rotate the shrouds until the holes align with the holes on the top edge of the P761 spill buckets. Once the shroud boots are properly aligned, install the band clamps at the base of the shroud openings and tighten the nuts on the band clamps to secure the boots to the platform. Once the shroud platforms are installed, the F100 multi-port cover, frame, and skirt assembly can be installed. Place the multi-port cover into the F100 frame. It is a good idea to clean and lubricate the frame prior to installing the multi-port cover so that the cover fully seats down into the frame. Position the cover, frame, and skirt assembly on top of the P-gravel so that it is directly above the top hat. The ports on the multi-port should be left open at this time. The top of the frame should be level with the finished grade string line. Rotate the cover and frame until the open ports are centered directly over the spill buckets. 
The spill buckets must be bolted to the multi-port prior to pouring concrete. This will prevent the frame from moving during the installation of concrete. If this step is ignored and the frame is not properly aligned with the spill buckets after the tank pad cures, it will be necessary to break concrete and reinstall the frame. To properly connect the spill buckets, position the holes on the top edge of the spill buckets and shrouds within the port openings and drop the black cast iron clamping rings into place above the spill buckets. Using the four inch carriage bolts and nuts that come with the clamping ring kits, bolt the spill buckets to the clamping rings installed in the port openings. It will be necessary to remove the covers after the pad is poured, so do not over tighten the nuts at this point. If the top edge of the spill buckets are more than four inches below the top of the covers, it may be necessary to use the longer bolts supplied with the kits to help raise the buckets. Once the spill buckets are properly connected to the covers, both the fill and vent port covers and the inspection port cover should be installed. Apply white lithium grease to the gaskets of all covers prior to installation. OPW recommends the use of white lithium spray grease. If installing sealable port covers, make sure that the levers are fully depressed after the covers are installed into the port openings. Prior to pouring concrete, the multi-port covers and frames should be covered by plastic sheeting and tape to prevent damage. Failure to follow this step may result in damage to the multi-port cover surfaces or the cover gaskets. This type of damage will not be covered under warranty. Simply cut plastic sheeting to the same diameter as the multi-port frames and tape the sheeting onto the top outer edge of the frames. Once this is completed, check to ensure that all frames are level with the finish grade string lines. Follow standard industry practices for installing rebar and pouring the concrete tank pad. Use appropriate trowels to carefully finish the concrete around the frame. The top edge of the frame should be level with the concrete tank pad. Once the tank pad is fully cured, the plastic sheeting and tape can be cut away using a razor knife. Final steps. Number one, remove the clamping rings and the multi-port covers. Install drop tubes and the required EVR adapter fittings and dry brakes into the spill buckets. Number two, Install leak detection sensors. The sensor tube should be installed directly below the inspection port located in the multi-port cover. Number three, clean the frame to ensure that no concrete or residue is on the mating surface where the cover seats. Lubricate the frame and the multi-port gasket and reset the cover into the frame. Reconnect all bolts to the clamping ring. If installing a spill bucket with a drain valve, the drain valve chain should be attached to one of the four bolts. If you have any questions about this FiberTight multi-port installation instructional video, please contact OPW Technical Service at 1-800-422-2525.